Let's open up with a word of prayer. Get right in here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is going to be a great evening in the Lord. We're, we're expecting the Lord just to edify the body of Christ here tonight through Brother Rick Gordon, a friend of mine that I've known for many years of my life in ministry, and happy to have him back here with us at Glory Bound tonight. Father in heaven, we're thankful tonight for the many blessings you bestow upon us. And Father, we're so grateful for the, the gift of the evangelist. Lord, you, you, you just bless the church with the uh, a variety of ministers in the evangelistic area. And Lord, uh, I just thank you for Brother Rick Gordon tonight coming from Guthrie to be here with us this evening. And Father, we just pray that the uh, moving of the Holy Spirit would be uh, mighty in this service tonight. I pray that lives will be touched and lives will be changed. Lord, we thank you for each and every one that's here tonight. We pray, Lord, that uh, everything is said and done, may it bring glory and honor to you. And Lord, I just pray now for that awesome anointing of the Lord to flow throughout this service this evening. In Jesus' name I pray. And God's people said... Amen and amen. Ladies and gentlemen, make my uh, brother in the Lord here, my brother from another mother. Uh, this is Brother Rick Gordon. Anyway, uh, we're, we're glad he's here with us tonight. Brother Rick Gordon. Thank you, Pastor. I hope you're ready to praise the Lord, and I just enjoy that so much. I'm, I'm glad you guys came tonight, and uh, what an honor to be with, uh, with folks that want to be in church. And I love church. I tell people all the time, one of the, th the best things about coming to church is for an hour or so I don't have to hear any cussing. I'm just telling you, there are people out there, just, and they're not even mad. And they're, they're, it's just, I don't even get it. So it's just nice to be around people that are trying to do right and lift up Jesus. Now, this first song, uh, and I'm not, it's not Gia's fault. I don't have, I, I don't know if you do the computer thing or not, but I, I don't do computers. And, and my brother's older than me, and he's always on my case. You need a thing where you can plug it in and put all the words. And I said, come on, these guys got brains. I don't do anything that difficult. So if, 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 if you don't mind jumping in a little bit, but this one just says, praising the Lord puts a smile on my face. It's hard to praise the Lord to be a grumpy person. So uh, if, if you want to join in, it's pretty simple. It goes like this. I don't know why singers say that, but that's what it goes a little bit like this. Praising the Lord puts a smile on my face. I can't get over His amazing grace. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. I'm going to praise Him all of the time. I'm going to praise Him. Praise Him. I'm going to praise Him. Praise Him. Praising the Lord puts a smile on my face. I can't get over His amazing grace. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And I'm going to praise Him all of the time. I'm going to praise Him. Praise Him. I'm going to praise Him. Praise Him. I'm going to praise Him in the morning, praise Him at night. Give a shout out to Jesus cause He's alright. Jesus is good, He deserves all our praise. And I'm going to praise Him all of my days. I'm going to praise Him. Praise Him. I'm going to praise Him. Jesus, cause he's all right. Jesus is good. He deserves all our praise. I'm going to praise him all of my days. I'm going to praise him. Praise him. I'm going to praise him. Praise him. All right. Now, I got the feeling this is a pretty loving church. People seem to be very uh, happy they're with each other. And, uh, and I know that uh, some of you didn't get to hug everybody's neck. And it's a good thing to fellowship one with another. Uh, we walk in the light we, and we have fellowship one with another. So maybe there's somebody that your smile is going to change their day. I don't know what everybody's going through, but a smile never hurts. So I want us to do this a couple more times because now I see some of your lips are moving. I knew you were singing from your heart before. But I'm thinking maybe now it's worked up a little bit to where... And, and by the way, it's okay in church to make a mistake. 
because uh, I'm going to make more than one tonight, but this, I tell people all the time, this is the most supportive environment you will ever be in. Unless you're in Mary Kay, this is the most supportive environment you'll ever be in. So as we sing this a little bit, just maybe walk around and maybe there's somebody you missed and just let them know that you love them, Jesus loves them, and you wanted to pass it on to somebody. Would you do that? Oh, praising the Lord puts a smile on my face. I can't get over His amazing grace. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. I'm going to praise Him all of the time. I'm going to praise Him. Jesus, Jesus. 
love singing about Jesus. One time somebody came up to me and said, well, that song's just vain repetition. <laughs> and I said, brother, you can think anything you want, but there's no vain repetition calling on the name of Jesus. Some of you probably grew up in families like I did where, boy, your mother, if someone's going to say, oh, she's a Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, she, so people say, well, what did she say? I said, she called on the name of Jesus. We did something. You know, and, and I never thought of my, anybody would ever say calling on the name of Jesus was a vain repetition. But you can't say his name enough. Give him glory. From the abundance of your heart, let your mouth speak to him. Let me ask the question of the evening, though. Before we go on, Brother Wayne's back there, and I appreciate him so much being there to protect your ears. I've never wanted to be the last group that was anywhere. Because a lot of times people come up and they say, now the last group that was here was too loud. So that's why we got Brother Wayne back there. So let me ask the question, is this too loud for anybody? Is he doing a good job? Give Brother Wayne a hand, please. Thank you, Brother Wayne. We don't have to have a prayer line for hearing after, uh, after church. Now, as you could see, uh, did you say something, Pastor? Oh, I just... Oh, good. I just want to make sure I always respect the pastor. If he said, yes, sir, I just, you know. Um, but at, if you, how many of you have ever been to camp meeting? Sawdust on the ground. And, so uh, I got this last year, I got to do, um, last year I got to do indoor camp meeting. And I was very pleased. Because, see, when we, when we did camp meet when I was a kid, we didn't have air conditioning in the church. So there was a reason we went outside. I was so glad when he said we're going to do a camp meeting. I thought, well, I'll do anything. You know, if it's not illegal or immoral, I'll do it for you. But when they said camp meeting, I, all I could think about was the sawdust and the heat. And uh, and turned out it was indoor with air conditioning, and I, I enjoyed it. But the one thing about camp meeting, now I find weird things. When you grow up in church, things hit you a little different. Um, and you find them funny. And somebody, my, my mother used to say, you're making fun. But I wasn't making fun... Uh, you know, sometimes I'd mimic the preacher and said, you're making fun of God. I said, no, I'm making fun of my pastor. He's funny. I want to make fun of God. But uh, like the Sunday school superintendent, if you ever were in a thing where they got up and they'd say how many were in Sunday school and everything, and the Sunday school superintendent would get up and say, we'd like to recognize the visitors. And I thought, well, if they're visitors, you wouldn't recognize them. <laughs> That's the thing that, that hits, you know, hits me. Well, one of the, the things about camp meeting was, and I didn't play anything back then, you know, so I sang a little bit, but I was always intrigued with musicians, and especially drummers. Drummers, um, and I've grown to know that drummers, can, um, if they're good and they're solid, uh, they'll just take you along, it's good. And in camp meeting, all you had to do, know was one beat, and that was it, the one we just did. And you could stay there for a half an hour. And a guy that could do that for a half an hour, I would just go, wow, they put a nickel in him or something. He just planned. See, now I have this box that does it forever. So he doesn't even get tired and doesn't eat anything. You know, it's just good to have him here. But I want to do a song that's like an old camp meeting song with some, uh, it's new. How do I explain this? I'm a man. I don't explain things very well. But... Um, uh, I'll just sing it, but it's got old songs mixed in with it, and it just, it's not good English either. But I've been in Oklahoma long enough, so when, it's, there, there ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. Now, I went to a seminar one time, I was doing some music, and this guy was speaking, and we had a little, like the syllabus, you know, we had this thing that he was teaching out of. Very, you know, it was good. And he had all these letters after his name. And I was real proud that he had studied. But I was talking to him while, while he was teaching. I was sitting with a pastor friend of mine. And I, I said, do you have a dictionary? There were four words in one sentence I didn't understand. Now, he may be real smart, but he wasn't communicating. And if we can communicate and people understand that all you need is a touch from the Lord. 
Now, I understand. I'm, I'm, all, I'm not against anybody counseling and helping people, but I'm telling you, there ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. So I want you to join in anywhere you know, uh, you know, and if you don't know the words, just say watermelon. It all fits in fine. It's just good. Let's just have church together. All right. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. Well, being in His presence is its own reward. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. Is its own reward There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord Let me tell you a story There was once a leper The outcast of his day Every time he came around The folks said go away Well Jesus had compassion On the one the world ignored There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord Come on help me There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord her only son. Jesus said to her, fear not, he knew what must be done. He said, arise to the young man, to your mother now go forth. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. No, there ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. Where being in his presence is its own reward. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. sick and broken my faith was growing thin i drug myself to church that night i had to get to him the atmosphere was holy and it brought me peace and joy there ain't nothing like a touch from the lord no there ain't nothing like a touch from the lord no there ain't nothing like a touch from the lord well being in his presence is its own reward there ain't nothing Jesus to reach down and touch my soul. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. No, there ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. Well, being in His presence is its own reward. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. Oh, one single brush from heaven.
there's something somewhere, just me? Could be me. I love it when a plan comes together. It's all good. Let's see what's going on here. Did it go away from you too? Oh, you can hear me. All right, so this one. I'm sorry, all of a sudden it just kind of... There we go. Talk amongst yourselves. That was weird. You guys were, you guys were fine. Okay, let's see what's going on. I apologize for that. It's just a, we'll start right where we were going. Oh, one single touch from heaven can turn your life around and give you new perspective, move you up to higher ground. So when you're in the Molly Grubs, I'll tell you what to do. Call on the name of Jesus, he'll come and rescue you. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. Where being in his presence is its own reward. There ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. No, no, there ain't nothing like a touch from the Lord. They say when you make a mistake, it makes everybody feel comfortable. Are you feeling really good now? That's good. That's why I said I'm just glad it's not a competition. That's what I do love about church. I tell young people when they're first starting to minister music, I said, you have to realize these people are all for you. This isn't outside the church where people are kind of saying, oh, you missed that. You did that. That's all right. Anyway, I'm sorry about that, Brother Wayne. It had nothing to do with you. I just thought it did. But uh, I didn't see any smoke coming out anywhere. And I don't know if you know this or not, but electronics, does anybody deal with electronics? Electronics are possessed. And we're talking about this little church out in Arizona where I go, and this lady, Sister Marilyn, she's a really nice lady, but she, and I don't mean but, she's just a very spiritual lady. And she always comes up to me before service, and she said, now, Brother Rick, is there anything we can pray about? I said, well, Sister Marilyn, I said, you know, Everything's real good. I'm real happy about everything. But if you want to put something on your prayer list, just put Rick's Electronics on there. And she said, oh, is there something wrong? And I said, no, well, they're possessed. And she said, well, should we anoint them with oil? I said, well, we've cast them out, the devil out of them a lot of times. But they just keep coming back. And like I said, other than smoke coming out, we're okay. It's, it's all right. Don't, you know. And if I happen to do this by accident, don't come up and lay hands on me. That's just a switch. So there's nothing... Nothing weird going on here, all right? All right, some of you might know this one. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands. And I will always see that when your love came down. Sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth. And I will daily lift my hands. And I will always see of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love. Sing of your love forever. Oh, I feel like dancing. That's foolishness, I know. But when the world has seen this light, they will dance with joy like we're dancing now. I could sing of your 
sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. Forever and ever and ever. that song there is a name I love to hear and I love to sing it's worth oh it sounds just like music in my ear the sweetest name on earth I love you Lord oh how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus because is my story this is my song praising my Savior all the day long this is my story this is is my story 
This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior. I will glorify the Lamb. I will glorify the Lord of Lords. He is the great I am. I will glorify the King of Kings. I will glorify the Lamb. I will glorify the Lord of Lords. He is the great I am. Be Be glorified, be glorified, be glorified, be glorified in the heavens, be glorified in the earth, be glorified in this temple, Jesus. Jesus, be thou glorified, worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord. Worship the Lord in the earth. Worship the Lord in this temple. Worship, worship, worship the Lord. I will glorify the King of Kings. I will glorify the Lamb. I will glorify the Lord of Lords. He is the great I am. Thank you, Jesus. I accept. Oops, there we go. I accepted the Lord. I have real smart friends. I just don't know what button to push half the time. I accepted the Lord when I was five years old. And I wasn't a perfect kid after that, but I never. I, I can remember, and it's not, this is not a, this is just a testimony of the keeping power of God, but I, I never remember saying like I remember some of the, the guys were talking about when they were 21, what they were going to do, because they could. Now, I don't know if it was just, uh, in fact, in my day, in where, where I grew up in church, it wasn't just the reverence and respect of God that we learned, but it was the fear uh, I think maybe, maybe, I won't say too much because uh, I'm still in church. I'm not afraid of God anymore. But I don't want to displease him either. In fact, my brother, I was telling you about him a little bit, I got a lot of stories about my brother. In fact, we went to a one-room school and I sat in the back row and he sat right behind me. Very weird kid. And um, thank you very much. But... He was griping, and this is all these years later, because we were in church, we had revivals all the time, we were in church, we had to take homework to, you know, we did homework in the back of the church. Uh, um, I mean, just, we were, we lived in church, that was kind of like the old, um, uh, in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, the first thing they saw in the morning, and the last thing, that, you know, that, that was the was the tabernacle. They were looking there, well, and, and I'm not saying it was always good, all I know is that it didn't hurt me any. And he'd never been in jail, and he had good kids, and it was always, you know, people that loved Jesus. 
And he was griping about that. And, and I just said, when are you going to quit? Be thankful we had a mother that loved Jesus. Amen. We didn't have to go through some of the things that people have to go through. And, and um, anyway, this song is just a, it's a testimony. And I, and I, I think it's, it's just the, the idea that I never thought, and one of the lines even in the song says, I never thought I'd live this long. Did anybody beside me, I, maybe I don't need to show up, I ask that all the time, I just think about it. I thought when I was a kid, 30 was old. I really did. I just, just, uh, and I, I, back some years ago, uh, so, I, you know, I was younger then even, but I remember subbing, I did some substitute teaching. And uh, in Oklahoma, you don't have, I don't have any degrees or anything. In fact, that guy that had all the n letters after his name, I do have some letters after my name, but they're not the same as his. I have things like OCD. And ADD, I have some of those. Sister Joy, I have ADD. You think maybe she's very kind. She puts up with me. In fact, I didn't know for a long time there was ADD and ADHD. I didn't know there were two. I thought ADHD was ADD in high definition. That's what I thought. But uh, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I, I I just never thought when I went into the to the to the little uh, teachers' lounge. And I'm thinking, what are these kids doing in here? They were teachers. It's really bad, you know, when, when your friends have great-grandchildren. I said, don't stand near me. No, I'm not worried about it. What's really bad is when they want to give you the senior discount without you asking. I'm just going, hey! You know, but anyhow, it's, it's not that. It's just the idea that I've never thought that there could be any other Lord of my life. Even when I got off track, I knew, like David, I, I'm always amazed at people when you ask them who they would like to be if there was a character in the Bible. And some people say, David, I'm going, are you kidding me? That's like saying Job. I know that he was a man after God's own heart. The best thing that David did was when he made mistakes, he knew where to go. That's the smartest thing he ever did, but he, well, by no means would I want to go through what David went through. I like the end, but I'm not sure I like all that middle part. So after all these years, I know that I know. I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able. And I know that these are, what's the, the good um, spiritual term? Tempestuous, pen, I can't even say it, tempestuous times. We don't say trials and tribulations anymore because people say, well, that's old-fashioned. I said, well, we still got them. I don't care what words you use. You know, and God never promised us that we would not have a rocky road. But he did promise us a good pair of Nikes. He will give us the right equipment to get through these things and, and to be able to look to him, the author and the finisher of our faith, and be able to say, like Job did say, and I love what he said, though God slay me, yet I will trust him. Hopefully you like this new song. After all these years, Jesus is still Lord. After all these years, I still believe His holy word. He has proven to be faithful, even when I've fallen short. There's still joy in the journey, after all these years. Who would ever thought? I'd be standing here today When I was but a boy I never thought I'd reach this age But God in His mercy Has seen fit to give me life And I just want to praise Him For the breath I breathe tonight After all these years Jesus is still Lord After all these years I still believe His holy word he has proven to be faithful Even when I've fallen short There's still joy in the journey After all these years Keep your eyes on the Master Never lose sight of the goal Don't forget the eternal vision Is to make heaven your home all the shiny things around us will grow dark and fade away. 
But heaven's light is Jesus. He grows brighter every day. After all these years, Jesus is still Lord. After all these years, I still believe His holy word. He has proven to be faithful, even when I've fallen short. There's still joy in the journey. After all these years, after all these years, Jesus is still Lord. After all these years, I still believe His holy word. He has proven to be faithful, even when I've fallen short. And I don't regret one single day. I don't regret the narrow way. And I don't care what the people say. After all these years, Jesus is still Lord. After all these years, I still believe His holy word. He has proven to be faithful, even when I've fallen short. There's still joy in the journey. After all these years, there's still joy in the journey. After all these years. A friend of mine wrote this next song. His name is Tom Duckett. Some of you might have heard him in around Oklahoma a long time. Pastored that church out in uh, Bridge Creek that got blown away in the 99 tornado. And um, he played basketball for OBU. He's about six foot seven, six foot eight. I can't remember, but he's tall. And um, had a group called Duckett and Fisher. And I just like to give him credit. He's a good man of God. And I just remember that some of you remember all those, those storms and they helped rebuild that whole area out there, the church did. And, um, but I remember, I think his name was Charlie. I don't, it doesn't matter the name, but the guy that was uh, like the custodian of the church. And here they were on a, on a Wednesday night, their TV cameras and all, all filming him, you know, out there. And, and uh, they're standing in the rubble of their church. And uh, Brother Tom looks over at Charlie and he said, the custodian said, Charlie said, if you can't do a better job than this, we're probably going to have to let you go. They were still had joy in the journey, even after all that. And I think that's some kind of testimony. But he wrote a song, and uh, it touched my heart, and I hope it touches yours. It's, uh, it's called Just Jesus and Nothing More. Only Jesus paid the price for me. Only his love could set me free. Nobody else could open heaven's door Just Jesus and nothing more Just Jesus and nothing more He knew me before time began He knew my face He knew my sin Considering the cost of his fight to win it's so amazing that it took me in only Jesus paid the price for me only his love could set me free nobody else could open heaven's door just Jesus and nothing more just jesus and nothing more the power of the cross changed my life it broke my heart made me get things right because of what the lord did upon the tree my sins are gone I've been made free Only Jesus paid the price for me Only His love could set me free Nobody else could open heaven's door Just Jesus 
and nothing more Just Jesus and nothing more Just Jesus and nothing more Jesus than silver or gold I would rather have him than riches untold I would rather have Jesus than houses or land and I'd rather be led by his nail-scarred hand. I would rather have Jesus than men's applause. Oh, I'd rather be faithful to him. Dear call, oh, I'd rather, I'd rather have Jesus than wealth or fame, and I'd rather be true to his holy, wonderful name than to be the king of a vast. And be held in sin's dread sway. I'd much rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Oh, he's fairer than the lilies of the rarest bloom. My Jesus is sweeter than the honey right out of the comb. Oh, he's all everything that my hungry spirit might ever need. Oh, I'd rather have Jesus and let my sweet Savior lead than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin's dread sway. Jesus than anything this world affords today. I had the uh, privilege of meeting, uh, some of you might know the name, David Sapp, he wrote the, him and his brother Max uh, wrote the, the song, There is a River, beautiful song. I, I only met him, I met him a couple times at meetings. Um, I didn't have, you know, not, well, not, like great friends or just in the Lord, we just, it was a nice thing to meet him. Uh, I go down, to, way down to South Texas to a little town called Port O'Connor. When I got down there, pastor he said here I need to give this to you and he handed me a CD uh, that David Sapp had left because he heard I was going to be there and he said would you give this to Rick for me and I, I thought that was such an honor you know that he'd even remember me at all and and uh, uh, you know that he would leave me this CD and one of the songs uh, just jumped out into my spirit and that happens sometime I don't know if you ever get a, a you know you listen to something and 
all of them are nice, but there's one that just grabs you. you know, I mean, that, that's why that, you know, everybody's got favorites. But um, this, uh, I've always been fascinated. I, I, I love God to heal people. I just, I just know he does. And um, I'm not sure, and this is going to sound wrong, so listen to the whole thing. I, I thought of this hard and long. I'm not sure God believes in miracles. See, now, we believe in miracles. In fact, we expect them. I hope you expect them. The reason I say, I, and I'm not speaking for God, I'm just saying I, I thought about it, and I thought, well, God probably doesn't believe in miracles because to him it's just business as usual. And to us, it's a miracle. To him, it's just, you know, no, no harder to do this than do that or whatever. So I'm just saying God loves us and he cares about us. And um, uh, so when, when you read stories, the, the miracles in the Bible, and, and I don't know why it's always interested me. And I, I'm, not like a, I'm not a great studier. I have two books in my library at home and one of them isn't even colored in yet. But uh, I, 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 I've always been fascinated with how Jesus prayed for blind people. Because I've been, in, I've been in Pentecostal circles, I've been in all kinds of different faith circles, and again, this is not a judgment call, don't take any offense at this, but I've seen people that say, well, so-and-so did it this way, so then, then you go across the country and you see people doing it that way. Not bad, it's not, it's, 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 it's not a bad thing, I just know God's a creator. And I, I think one of the... And when I say weird, it was the coolest thing. I did a meeting with a guy that I already had a little bit of a, I didn't know him, but when they were advertising him, I, I, I got a little angst in my spirit. I thought, oh man, what am I getting myself into? It's a guy named Joe Jordan. I don't know if anybody ever heard the name, but they billed him on the, on the poster uh, as God's chiropractor. And I thought, oh man. I, I mean, I, and I believe God heals anything, but it was just, I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to try to keep a good attitude. And I actually had to apologize to him, even though he didn't think that I was thinking anything. This guy was so amazing to me because when he prayed for people, uh, in fact, he gave them scriptures as medicine. And it was just interesting because he'd say, now, here's these, and his wife would write these scriptures down. He'd say, now, and I need you to, I want you to take these three times a day. And he said he'd get calls, people call and say, Brother Joe, uh, I'm really, in, uh, this is helping, but can, can, I take, can, can I take those four times a day? And he said, well, you're not going to overdose on the word. But I'd see him pray for people, and, you know, at first they were sitting down in the chair, and I thought, okay, here we go with the legs. And, the, and, and, I'm, and I believe God does all that. But it was just like he'd walk away. Some guy's legs were sticking out, you know, like six inches above the ground. Now, I don't know if, I'm not a gymnast, but I can't do that for very long. And that guy's legs would just stay there, and he'd go off to pray for somebody else. And, there, and I'm watching, I'm playing, I'm watching. I said, how in the world is that guy's legs staying up like that? And pretty soon that guy'd start laughing. Because he, he, he couldn't put his legs down. And I saw one lady over here, and she's just like going, Wah. and I thought, oh, man, now they're going to take pictures of this, and we're going to, and God was doing something, but he wasn't touching her. Anyway, it was just the most unique thing that I had seen, and it just, I, like I said, I had to apologize, and I said, I felt like it was really of God. And he would pray for people's eyes, and he'd, he'd tell them, he said, now, don't do, and he said, you know, I'm just telling you, I know you have faith, and all, he said, but don't, don't throw your glasses across the room. You know, how many of you remember some of those stories, you know? And, and uh, there was an old story about the tent meeting where the, where the, the preacher ran down there and the lady, you know, sitting down there. And, and uh, so he, he saw crutches there. And he took those crutches and he, he, you know, went over and busted them or something, you know. And people shouting and everybody's happy. Which, and I've seen all, I, I believe in all this. But the story was that when everything was over and there was a little lady sitting on the front row... And uh, he said, well, sister, said, uh, are you waiting for a ride? And she said, no. She said, someone took my crutches. And I can't get it. It wasn't, it wasn't her. It was the, other, the other lady got up and was running around. It wasn't even her crutches. So anyway, I'm saying that God knows what he's doing. In fact, he prayed for, for blind guys three different ways. 
In fact, one time he prayed for the guy. Are you ready for this? Jesus prayed for a guy twice. Oh. Remember when he prayed for him and he said, can you see? And he said, well, I sort of see men as trees. And Jesus said, well, let's complete this thing. I think the funniest one to me, and I know, again, I grew up in church, so some of this stuff, I, I, if, I, if I didn't think you were a Sunday night crowd that you knew better, you know I'm not mocking, but I just thought it was funny, the one that he took one guy out, to, out of town. And the Bible says, and he spit in his eyes. And I, I always thought that was weird. He was probably doing it so people wouldn't think he was weird, but the blind guy didn't see it coming. But the one that this story is about, I believe it's in John the ninth chapter, but it, you can look it up. But it's where the, he told the man to go wash. He made the, you know, the, the clay and he put it in his eyes. And it's always amazing to me, and I've heard stories from pastors over the years where they, they'll tell somebody, you know, uh, this is what God is saying to do. And they don't want to do that. They want to do something else. Why do I have to do See that, and, and, and there right there, you're just kind of looking in God's face and saying, do you have another? That's a little bit, you know, that's really beneath me, Lord. Well, I'll tell you one thing. This guy obeyed. And because he obeyed, God touched him. The song simply entitled Miracles. 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 From you. picked up the clay told the blind man that day go and wash in the pool and you'll see the blind man obey washed his eyes out that day the people cried out look look the beggar can see they asked how can this be born blind now can see he answered all I know is that Jesus touched me same way today Jesus passes our way he's reaching out touching all who believe and with your faith you will know his touch makes you whole then you will cry out I know Jesus me you need from the Lord tonight and I know we're in the uh, 
Easter season. And there'll be a lot of quoting of this scripture if the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead will dwell in me. It will quicken. One of the translations says, give life to my mortal body. See, I believe that God wants to touch us with that resurrection power. Not just for resurrection of the dead, but to quicken this mortal body. Miracles. He's passing our way tonight. Would you just look to Him? And see, when something is impossible, it's usually impossible in our brain. But when an impossible situation meets an unchangeable God, the situation must change because God cannot change. We know He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. These are scriptures that we know. And sometimes we just, you know, we, we kind of we're thinking like we're going through what Job did, but we, we have to look to him in our and in, in the author and the finisher of our faith because of him we're saved because of him we're healed don't let someone steal your faith trust him he's here tonight not because i'm here but because you we've created an atmosphere for the holy spirit to work i believe that with all my heart if you need a miracle, like I said, it may not be a miracle to God, but to you, it's a big deal. As we sing it again, would you just reach out and touch the Lord? Miracles, miracles, miracles from you, Lord, I believe. ministering to us with your resurrection power, spirit, soul, and body. Lord, make us complete quick in our mortal bodies right now. Lord, that thing we've been struggling with, go right to the heart of that need. Father, I know you're not the author of confusion. So Lord, if we've had minds that have just been running wild, frustrated, and torn by the things that are going on in, in, in our world, not just the world, but in our world. Lord, I ask you to do what you did when you were on that boat and you said, peace, be still. Peace, be still. Lord from ourselves our intellect our reasoning that reasons you away help us to trust you to rest in your arms sheltered in your arms Lord I believe Lord I Receive my miracles from you. Say it with me one more time. Lord, I believe. Lord, I receive my miracles.
we used to sing all the time. You are my everything. You are my all. You are my everything. Both great and small. You gave your life for me, made everything new. You are my everything, no other will do. Now, I'm not trying to belabor the fact, and I feel like we're in the presence of the Lord, but that little song came to my heart. And maybe you're struggling, and I don't always do this, but I believe your pastor is a man of God, and, and I know he loves you guys. I know that. And if you're struggling, and maybe there's just, and, and I've, I've been talking about this recently. I haven't done the song for years and years, but I used to have a song called The Corners of Your Life. You take a square, and you put a circle inside that square, and that's usually kind of what we do with Jesus we give him the circle but we've got some stuff and I'm not talking bad stuff I'm not talking about sin particularly I'm just saying things that we decide that we can take care of ourselves and when we were talking to young people some of you might have worked with young people and you tell them if he's not Lord of everything he's Lord of nothing he doesn't take second place you got to put him on the throne all the things that we grew up that we know but we still have those little corners outside that circle and just kind of, and it'll, it'll eat at you because you know you should give it to the Lord. And if you need special prayer tonight, I won't bug you. I'm just going to say I want to sing this a couple more times. I'm going to ask Pastor to come if you need special prayer. We believe in prayer. If you want to help us pray, that's great too. But uh, don't anybody... Uh, you know, don't feel like, I'm not, I'm not begging you, I'm not pushing you. I'm just saying if, if God is speaking to your heart and you just need pastor to agree with you tonight, we're supposed to do that. It kind of like puts all the faith together and it just helps everything. So if you need special prayer tonight, would you come? You are my everything. You are my all. Tell him. You are my everything don't wait for somebody else both great and small God wants to help you he gave his life for me made everything new he is my everything no other will do maybe you've been trying it on your own give it to the Lord another day. Let's pray. You're welcome. He gave his life. 
life for me Made everything new He is my everything No other will do Jesus be the Lord of all Jesus be such a 
what time is this? Arise on healing wings, son of righteousness. guys to do something for me now how many of you believe the evangelist is a gift to the body of christ amen if this man and his ministry that the lord has provided him with if he's been a blessing to you tonight i hope that you can return the blessing monetarily and through your prayers for him that god will continue to open up doors for brother rick and uh, i I love this guy He, he got a great minister give the lord a praise clap offering for what he's done here tonight amen Let's bow our heads for just a moment. We're going to ask a prayer over the offering here this evening. If you have uh, an offering that you can come uh, and put in this offering box, I know Brother Rick will make good use of it. This is good ground, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I was thinking about this earlier uh, today that uh, I believe it was in 1990 that Brother Rick and I actually came to be 
uh, brothers in the Lord in ministry. And in, and in 92, whenever we moved in our first new building over here, that little L-shaped building over on Gilkey Street, this brother was the one that come down and helped me wire that for sound and helped me to get a sound system and everything. And he's just been a blessing in, in the Lord to me so many times throughout the years. And so tonight in this return engagement, I, I pray that you, you believe in your heart. It's really been a blessed time in the Lord here this evening. And I'm going to have, have Brother Rick do one more song here for us as we're giving out this offering. This is an old song that uh, I really I really like. It's a uh, long black train is what it's called. And this guy, he does a fantastic job with that. But before before we get to that, let's pray over a time of giving. If you if you bring your tithe, be sure and put it in an offering envelope. And, and that way it, the, it, it'll be uh, marked for tithing. But anything else that's in this offering boxes tonight that's unmarked, it's not marked as a tithe, it, we're going to make sure that Brother Rick gets uh, that's all counted and we get him a check for, for the full amount what you give. I'm, I'm not one of those preachers that say you come and give and we keep 50% of what you give to him. Nope. I've never done that to an evangelist. And I never will. I've never understood why pastors do that uh, to these evangelists. But I, I know that a lot of times that happens. But it will never happen here at Glory Bound Church. Father in heaven, we're grateful tonight for the ministry of Brother Rick Gordon. We thank you, Father, for the love and the faith that he has in his heart to serve you all these years that he's been faithful, Lord, and just coming and being a blessing to Glory Bound Church. And not only here, Lord, he goes to a lot of other places, and we're all aware of that. So, Father, as we come to this part of this service tonight, we're so grateful for the moving of the Holy Spirit and the, and the invitation there. God, I thank you for those that stepped out in faith to come and pray tonight. And now as we come to this part of our service, Lord, to receive an offering, this love offering, Lord, I pray that we'd all just think about that for just a moment and let the Holy Spirit guide us in our giving here tonight. Lord, this is a love offering. And, Lord, I pray that we'll give whatever we give in love and in faith, knowing God loves a cheerful giver. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. If you would, everybody, if you got an offering to bring, I want you to bring it this time. Brother Rick, go ahead and start your tune there if you got it there. Brother, go ahead. There's a long black train Coming down the line Feeding off the souls Of the lost and cried Rails of sin Only evil remains Watch out, brother, for that long black train. You can look to the heavens, you can look to the sky. There is redemption looking right back in your eye. There is protection and there's peace the same. Burning the ticket. Oh, that long black train Cause you know there's victory In the Lord I say Victory in the Lord Cling to the Father And His holy name And don't go right On that long black train There's an engine here on that long black train Making you wonder if the ride is worth the pain He's just waiting for your heart to say Let me ride on that long black train Don't do it now Cause you know victory in the Lord I say victory in the Lord Cling to the Father and His holy name Don't go right on that long black train Whistle 
from a mile away It sounds so sweet But I must stay away That train is a beauty Making everybody stare But its only destination Is the middle of nowhere But you know there's victory In the Lord I say Victory in the Lord Cling to the Father and His holy name And don't go right on that long black train I said now cling to the Father and His holy name And don't go right on that long black train Shout, brother, for oh, that long black train. The devil's driving that long black train. Oh, yeah. Give the Lord a praise clap offer and praise the Lord. Brother Rick, fantastic job tonight, brother. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Let's close with a word of prayer once again. Thank all of you for coming out for our evening service tonight. Hope you enjoyed this. Yes, go right Just say one thing. Yes, go Not only have I enjoyed myself, and don't don't think this is weird, but uh, I always say that, but uh, I don't have any CDs with me. I'm not trying to hawk anything, but if you are a computer person, uh, they're out there in the thing. Yeah. Uh, they're out there wherever you go yeah. look for stuff yeah. in the cloud. Yeah, in My the cloud. My wife, Smartens, has yeah. them out there, so I didn't want you to think... I was being rude not having something because some folks will ask, so they're out there. It's in rickgordon.com? Uh, uh, just have to, whatever it is, you giggle it. And, giggle it. And, uh, and it's, G -O, it's G O R D E N, though, or you'll get some guy that's been in, in jail. And uh, it's, uh, hopefully you'll get it. Anyway, thank you. And for those of you that enjoyed you, this service Wayne. tonight, I am happy to tell you, Sister Gia has recorded this on DVD. And if you can actually watch it on YouTube, if that's what you'd like to do after she gets it reloaded and everything up on that, Brother Rick will be out there in Australia and Africa and Canada, uh, every place that we're going these days. I tell you, it's been amazing where God has taken our ministry to. But anyway, we're grateful for all of you being here tonight, and you're certainly welcome to get a copy of this if you'd like. Be sure and see Sister Gia about that, and she can be, get you a copy for your own uh, home use if you'd like to revisit uh, Brother Rick Gordon from time to time and his ministry here tonight all right let's close with a word of prayer father in heaven i am thankful tonight that we have victory in jesus and god we're so grateful tonight for the indwelling presence of the holy spirit recognizing lord that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world Lord, I just pray your blessings upon each and every one tonight. That, Lord, as we leave this house, may we go rejoicing, knowing that there is joy in our journey. And, Lord, I praise you and I thank you for Brother Rick Gordon. I thank you, Lord, for this uh, brother's ministry. And, Lord, may you continue to open up doors and use him in a mighty way for your kingdom's work. And once again, Lord, I ask you to just bless my brothers and sisters now as we leave this house. And may we go and be the blessings for you this week, Lord, you'd have us to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you once again for being here tonight. You guys have a good week, and we'll see you Wednesday evening. Thank you, Brother Wayne. I appreciate you very much. Yeah, thank you.